Hey, welcome to the Backwest Gourmet. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to cook low and slow on the Weber kettle grill using the Weber charcoal baskets. Y'all stay tuned. All right, so let's go ahead and open this box up. I ordered these in off of Amazon. If you guys haven't uh, had the opportunity yet, go down in the link below. Um, you'll see a link there to our Amazon store. I'm going to have these up there for you. These are in the recently reviewed products. I've never tried these before. My son did have a uh, set of them uh, several years ago now. And um, they seem to work very well. So we're going to give them a try. Uh, instructions are really not even necessary. We're going to put them in the bottom of the grill like that. Okay, let's take a quick look at the initial quality. I know this is uh, the same metal that they use for all their like high heat products. Um, they don't completely close up in the back. Um, that's probably on design. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure that's to let you know air in, to let the air flow around your charcoal. And I've had really good luck with every Weber product I've bought so far. Okay, so if you're new to the Weber kettle grill, and you just got your first one and you're trying to learn how to use it, this lever here does more than clean your grill out. Okay, that controls your damper so that you can control your heat in the grill. And I made a few marks, I've had this one for over five years, I made a few marks on mine by uh, opening it a quarter, half, three quarters, and fully open. So I wanted to show you really how, you know, it cleans your grill, yeah, it lets the ashes fall down, but more importantly, it opens these air holes, okay? And obviously, the, the less they're open, the slower your fire's gonna burn. So we want ours, right now just crack I'm gonna bring this guy up to 250 nice and slow okay I got some charcoal going over here and you probably see the ashes floating around I use them with a bag to get it gone now it's two two ways you can use this so, so um, you can concentrate your coals right in the center of your grill just like that if you want to sear some steak or uh, something like that you want it really hot and fast works great for that too because it keeps all your coals right mounted here and you don't have to put so many coals in the grill to get that sear zone. So that would be the first way to operate it. And But the way we're going to operate it today, we're going to push these to the sides, okay, both sides. And now we're going to put some unlit charcoal in them. We got some Kingsford All Natural. This was on sale recently. I don't know if any of y'all got in on that deal. Two 18 pound bags for $8.88 at Walmart. I got all they had. So let's go ahead and get some charcoal and uh, get it started. Put about a dozen on each side. Okay, these are completely unlit. We'll spread them out so we get a nice even burn. All right, and over here in the chimney, the Weber, the Weber charcoal chimney, I got some lit ones. Another, about a dozen. Maybe a few more than that, but let's go ahead and put what we got in here. About 10 or 12. First side there. I'm gonna align my vent on my lid right straight in line with the handles and I'm gonna open it, open it about three quarters of the way and we'll keep an eye on our heat. If we have to, we're gonna adjust the fire using that control rod down at the bottom. Okay, while that's coming up to heat, I'm gonna go ahead and take, I got a little alum, throwaway aluminum pan, but I went ahead and lined mine with the aluminum foil so I can use it multiple times and make it easier to clean it up without throwing the pan away every time. Not that they're expensive, but I like to use it multiple times if possible. So we're gonna put that down in the middle. Reason we're gonna do that, that's gonna catch any drips from uh, what we're cooking. And today, what, we sh what should we, what do you think we should cook on it? 
today? Leave me a comment right down in the box below and uh, let us know what you'd like to see us do low and slow with the Weber kettle. Let's go ahead and get that fire choked off so it doesn't get too hot. That's going to be the key. Keep that lid on as much as you can. Sorry for a little bit of background noise here. We had to turn the fan on to keep the smoke out from here. 275 is what we're shooting for. We're at 271. I'm going to show you what we did have to do though since we got the grill there with the flaps right over the top of those charcoal baskets. I backed some of those Kingsford out of there. Okay, put them over here on Sportsman's Grill. I'm going to use that to roast up some Aztec corn. I'm going to show you that also. This uh, Kingsford really lit fast and got hot fast. Um, my first time using their new product. I'll show you that right this now. This is the uh, new Royal Oak. And this is uh, the reason it brought me to it was it's 100% all natural hardwood. Okay, uh, our favorite brand is Stubbs because it burns so consistently and it burns so long, it's getting hard to find. So, all right, so I heard a bunch of you guys say baby back ribs. There's a go, beautiful half slab. I had those uh, going in some Texas style barbecue cuisine rub and some Texas grub rub for about 30 minutes in the refrigerator. I'm just gonna let them come up a little bit in heat here while the grill's finishing up, and then we'll throw these babies on the Weber. All right, she's setting perfect 275. I do have my Maverick um, thermometer in there. This particular Weber kettle grill uh, reads about 25 degrees high on its thermometer, which is pretty close. So most of them are off by more than 50 degrees. I know my Weber Smoky Mountain it reads 50 degrees low. So here we go. Going to put it in there, bed 275. So over here on the Weber kettle grill, I got to come in some some uh, fresh. I think this is Georgia sweet corn. Our sweet corn season is just about over. And what I did with that, I brushed it with mayo, real mayo, not not the fake stuff. I brushed it with real mayo. Not the fake stuff. I seasoned that with some Key West Spice Company Key West seasoning, which has some uh, granulated lime and lime solids in it. And then I hit it with some regular uh, hatch chili powder. This is a recipe I learned a long time ago called Aztec corn. This is the first time I'll be using it with the lime, but it's got to work good with that lime in it. So we're going to see how that turns out. We want to get that grill hot and we want it to pop some of those kernels and kind of blacken it on the outside. Alright guys, when it looks like that on all sides, I'm going to go ahead and just pull it off and hear those kernels snapping. That's what we want. I'm going to go ahead and get it in some aluminum foil put it off to the side over here I'm gonna wrap that up nice and tight and let it finish steaming in the back in the foil and we'll seal it up really nice then we can take right before we're ready to serve our our ribs we can throw this back up on the grill over one of them hot zones for just about two or three minutes and that'll bring that up nice piping hot again and it's going to be perfect. And you might be able to hear the rain started already. Our nemesis here in the summer. Folks, it's been a little over an hour and I'm just going to go in and check on our charcoal. <coughs> the great thing about the system here is these baskets line up with your little flip up doors. You know, that you can kind of go in and check on your charcoal. That side looks fine. This side's burnt down a bit. We're just going to go ahead and arrange some of those that are not they're not lit back onto some of those that are are. I might add a couple to this side. So since this uh, this side seemed to be burned down quite a bit more than the other, I've had a fan running over here because trying to it poured down rain and I had to move everything under the porch here. 
So sometimes when that, that happens, I have to turn a fan on, get the uh, smoke out. So we added like four coals to this side. This side over here looks fine. I just rearranged them a little. Got down, it's still at 260, where target temperature is 275. It's been too been 275 for most of the time over the past hour uh, about hour and 10 minutes we need at least uh, about another I would say another hour on that so we'll come back and check on it in a bit we've been tending the fire and a little charcoal as we go and that's what they look like after about two and a half hours so right now Tom set this lid down I'm gonna go ahead Going to take them off and give them a good wrap in aluminum foil. Color looks perfect. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drizzle a little uh, honey. Just going to add a little sweetness to them. Do that on both sides. Get some on the bone ends. Mm, that has some good honey. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this pack up. First, I need to go wash my hands. Okay, what I forgot to mention the other, uh, my last shot was we want two layers of aluminum foil here. They, these bones on a baby back have a big curve on them, and they tend to be a little sharp and uh, they can tend to puncture even heavy duty this is food service aluminum foil okay it is even more heavy duty than the stuff you can buy at the regular grocery store we did two seams and then we fold that seam on itself we want it to be a pretty much a steam proof pouch so we got that uh, down there we'll loosely Seal the ends up, do the same thing there. Two folds and then fold those fold on itself. Here I have some uh, organic apple cider vinegar. It's gonna give a little kick to it. We put all that sweet in there. I'm gonna pour in on this end of the pouch here. Maybe two, three tablespoons. Just give it a little moisture. Just give it a little moisture to help uh, with the steaming process in there. And that's what's going to tenderize them and make them, uh, you know, we don't want to bite off the bone, but we want them to be, or pull off the bone, but we want to be bite off the bone. All right, so our pack's ready. Ready to go back on the Weber kettle. So you hear all the time this phrase, fall off the bone, tender ribs, okay? Um, now, it's very popular for people to say, but it's not very easy to eat a rib that just, if you try to pick up the bone and it just falls all off into your plate, then you have to eat it with your, por with your fork. So what's used to having ribs? We could just have like pulled pork. Okay, so I don't understand the fall off the bone tender. Now you can get that rib tender, bite off the bone, okay, pull clean off the bone, no effort. That's what we shoot for in competition barbecue, is a bite off the bone tender rib. That's where we're going with these baby backs. Now, if you like them to just fall off the bone and have to eat it with a fork, let me know in the comments below. All right, well, you can see that foil pack is really puffed up on these guys. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and insert our thermopin right down into those ribs. And we're not looking for temperature. We're looking for tenderness. And right now, those are done. And they might be even falling off the bone. So we're going to go ahead and get them off of there right now and vent them out let them cool off a minute. So you see that our uh, our 
charcoal baskets were very good at containing our fire on both sides drip pan in the middle it's going to be very easy cleanup since we put that layer of foil on top caught any drippings we had when it was before we foiled it this wasn't a lot so now let's go ahead and get those uh, baby backs out of that foil pack alright so that was puffed up pretty good really was and uh, it's holding that steam really good and that's why it's puffed up but right now I want it I'm, I'm not screwing with it I just want to get it open and uh, let some of that extra heat out of there before they become completely fall off the bone you see we got a little pull back there and uh, these loin ribs do not take as much time in the foil as a like a St. Louis or a spare rib so go let it vent off there a little while and I absolutely wish you guys were here to smell that oh my god of minutes today I'm not going to sauce them all I'm going to do is bring up some of that honey and uh, apple cider that's organic apple cider vinegar gonna bring the juices up from that we cooked them in there in that foil pack and I'm just gonna I'm basting them with it okay and it, you know since those those burned bones are curved yeah, a lot of that sauce doesn't get up on those that backside there. So as they cool a little bit, you see that pullback now. We got at least a half inch pullback on those bones. Uh, that's going to tell us right there that that's going to be just about perfect. So as it cools off a little bit, I'm just going to keep basting it, make sure it doesn't dry out, and that's going to be one awesome rack of baby bags all right so let's go ahead and bring these ribs on over here to the to the cutting board face the doughs and the juice their own juices and uh, cool down a little bit now uh, still hot but I can I can handle them so I'll go ahead and uh, Cut four bones. Cut them right down the middle. That pullback is pretty nice. And you can see that those are not falling apart, but they are super, super tender. Got to put them over on our plate. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring out our corn. We had that keep them warm in the foil there. It's that beautiful Aztec corn recipe we did right there. Go ahead and cut that cob in half. Just like that. Let's put that on there. And then we have some uh, beautiful black eyed peas with the with the shells, with some snaps, some bacon, cook with some bacon. Oh yeah. So this is just one way you can use those Weber charcoal baskets to convert your Weber kettle grill into a low and slow smoker. I mean, those things are absolutely beautiful let's turn them over here see that uh, side and remember I didn't even put any sauce on these things these are just basted in their own juice give it a try so let's go ahead and give that uh, baby back rib a try oh my god look at that all right mmm the uh, you know tender is like butter huh. well mm. like I said it don't fall off the bone we can bite it right off the bone that's what you really want 
Let's try a little bit of that uh, Aztec horn. Mm. Super wow. So, you want to try out the Weber charcoal baskets for your Weber kettle grill to help you do a low and slow right there on that on that very very inexpensive everyday grill then try it out the biggest tip that I can give you for using the the Weber kettle grill is to keep practicing using it and learning how it works how it reacts from the damper how it lock reacts from the top vent I usually always leave that top vent open to get the cleanest fire you can get learn how to use that bottom vent to control your heat and to learn how to put the right amount of charcoal in there so you can keep your temperature consistent so the other thing I hope you learned in this video is you don't need a UDS or a big offset smoker or pellet grill or some of these very very expensive pieces of equipment to make great barbecue we just took a hundred and fifty dollar grill and made the most awesome uh, baby back ribs you're ever gonna have so thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can do it right there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right over there. And for a whole playlist of cooking on that Weber kettle grill, it's going to be right up there. We'll see y'all next time. But knowing uh, Weber like this. Oh, Lord.